Bear's First Christmas by Robert Kinnert, illustrated by Jim LaMarch. It started to snow. A bear, very young, caught two or three snowflakes on the tip of his tongue. The coming of snow could mean only one thing. It meant that the bear had to sleep until spring. Down a hill, which was steep, past tall bluffs, which were steeper, the bear trekked through the woods that grew deeper and deeper. He trekked on a path past the lake sandy shore and at last found a cave with a rough stone for a floor. At the mouth of the cave, the bear noticed a tree which struggled to grow where no tree ought to be. In the view the bear got from the mouth of the cave, the tree looked quite small, but also quite brave. As he rested his head on his furry soft paw, the brave little tree was the last thing he saw. And when his eyes closed and on the rough stone, he drifted to sleep all alone, all alone. The winter closed in and days and days passed while the wind from the north blew its shivery blast. On the floor of the forest, the snow rose and rose and the lakes and the streams and the rivers all froze. The bear slept and he dreamt of the coming of spring and the showers of rain and the flowers she'd bring and the birds who would return and who'd swoop through the skies, but a faraway sound made him open his eyes. He stepped from his cave and looked toward a hill. The shadows he saw all remained very still, but on wings of the wind, Far across the cold ground came the strain of a soft and mysterious sound. The bear followed the sound, but it stayed very faint and was lost by and by in a crow's harsh complaint. The crow cawed and cawed, and his caw seemed to say he needed some help finding food right away. In all those deep woods there was no one to hear except the young bear and to him it was clear. He had half to hike home and then search high and low for some sort of food for the shivering crow. Homeward he trudged with the snow to his knees and returned with some honey, a comb from the bees. The crow pecked his fill of that treat from the bear. Then he spread his black wings and took to the air. He followed the bear while the moon hid its face, and the stars twinkled cold in the vastness of space. They came to a bog where a moose, with his teeth, tried to scrape at the ice for the weeds underneath. He needed some help, which the bear could well see, so he scraped with his claws till the cold weeds were free. The moose ate and he ate, when he'd eaten his fill, he followed the bear and the crow round the hill. The wind whispered sharp and the night grew unpleasant as the bear saw ahead the crushed home of a pheasant. A branch overhead had let loose loads of snow that had smashed the bird's home with the force of a blow. The pheasant had chicks and the chick's cries were pleased that said to the bear that they were scared they would freeze. A nod from the bear let the frightened birds know they should follow the tracks that he made through the snow, which they instantly did on the chance that they might, with his help, find a place to be safe through the night. On the bear trudged till he saw, through more snow, a lair of burrows all lit by a glow. Icicles hung from its top sharp and bright, its sides had a space that was open and light. And what's this from inside? That wonderful sound? After all of his trekking, its source had been found. He crept to the light without making a noise. In the glow of the light were two girls and two boys. Appealing from them came mysterious words, a sound to the bear like the music of birds. He stood and he stared and his eyes grew more wide, for there was a wonderful glowing inside, a glow with warm rays 
like the sun at its rise, a glow cast from faces, a glow cast from eyes, but a glow most of all from a wonderful tree that the beasts out of doors were astonished to see. A tree dressed in lights, each shining as dew, what the lights meant though no animal knew. The last of the sounds faded off in the night. The children inside were led slowly from sight. Outdoors, the beasts stared as the last embers fell. They thought and they thought, but they still couldn't tell what the meaning could be of the music, the lights, the gladness inside on this darkest of nights. But a spark deep inside them gave off the same glow as they made their way back through the drifts of deep snow. The bear broke the trail and he made it so wide the moose who was giving the birds all a ride could quickly and easy follow along as the birds on his back sang an improvised song which was only ca-ca and merely tweet-tweet but was shared and by sharing grew more and more sweet. The bear showed the pheasants his well-hidden den to say they could stay until spring came again, to which all the pheasants were quick to agree, though they and the others all stared at the tree, at the crooked, ragged, and struggling tree, at the tree that was growing where no tree should be, for the moon in the sky had set down a bright beam that touched the tree's branches and made them all gleam almost as if in the dark of the night that the tree had been graced by a magical light. There was room in the cave for the moose. They didn't trudge off through the dark and the snow. Into the cave, the bear squeezed with each guest as they all settled down to begin their long rest. They slept in the tree, shed its marvelous light all through the frozen and long winter night. It continued to grow when the winter was done and the earth had been touched by the warmth of the sun. And the bear in new tracks knows the light never ends. It's a knowledge he shares with his wide roaming friends. For each friend, though he roams from the others apart, carries with him, inside him, that glows in his heart. The end.